Welcome to MadFame FM, where I show you my method for simplifying FM programming. In this episode, you'll also see my personal notation method. Carriers will be illustrated as orange boxes, and modulators will be blue. Operator boxes will have output level values inside them, and corresponding frequency values next to them. Now that you've watched episode 1, you know what operators and algorithms are, and what they do. To start making our own patches, we need to turn our simple sine waves into complex waveforms, and where better to start than the classic square and sawtooth found on every subtractive synthesizer. Years ago, I read an article by Bo Tomlin called How to Program the DX7. In this article, he describes how to create sawtooth and square waveforms on the DX7. I followed the examples, but to me, they didn't quite sound right. So, I plugged my DX7 into an oscilloscope to see what the waveforms actually looked like. And this is what I saw. The waveform had rounded peaks, and so the sharpness and clarity of the tone was lacking. I tried adding an extra modulator, but this didn't improve the sound. Also, using three operators for a basic waveform isn't very economical, especially when using a four operator synth. So, I went back to two operators, increased the modulator's output level to 75, and used the feedback loop which greatly improved the sound and wave shape for both saw and square. So, copy the formulas above and save each of these waveforms in their own patch memory. You can name them mfsaw and mfsquare. The next important thing was being able to change and control timbre. On subtractive synths, this is done using a filter. On FM, this is done by controlling modulator output level. We can program this as a fixed value, or we can control it in real time. Just like on a subtractive synth, we can do this with the LFO, keyboard velocity, the envelope, and with one of the four expression controllers. We can also control output level using keyboard level scaling, but we'll cover this in another video. Select your MF square waveform patch that you've just saved. Select the modulator. Go to Amp Mod Sensitivity. Enter a value of 3. This determines how sensitive the operator is to the mod wheel's position. Press Function. Set Mod Wheel Range to 99 and EG Bias to On. Press the key and move the mod wheel. You are now controlling the modulator's output level amount in real time. Notice how it sounds like a filter as we increase and decrease harmonic content from our sound. If we applied this technique to the carrier, we would control the overall volume of our sound, not the timbre. If we apply this technique to both carrier and modulator, we would control the timbre and the volume simultaneously. If the carrier sensitivity is of a different value to the modulators, then the mod wheel will affect them differently according to those values. We can apply the LFO to our modulator's output level to produce a repeating filter effect. Reset your square wave patch by reselecting it. Select the modulator, go to amp mod sensitivity, and enter a value of 3. This determines how sensitive the operator is to the LFO AMD. Select AMD, and slowly increase it from 0 to 99. You can play with the speed value as well, and also the waveform shapes for some interesting effects. Again, we can also apply this to the carrier, which will affect the overall volume of our patch. This technique adds rhythm and depth to any patch. You can hear this effect on my custom patch videos Trigger Synth, Rewind Synth, Walker 1, and Winterfell. Okay, reset your MF Square patch by reselecting it. Select your modulator, edit keyboard velocity sensitivity, and increase the value. Now the modulator's output level will be determined by how quickly you press a key. This way of controlling harmonic brightness is great for piano, electric piano and clavinet sounds that require this type of tactile performance control. 
For an example of this in action, see my custom patch videos Wide Square Base and DX Humana. Finally, let's use the envelope. Most subtractive synths have four stage envelopes, only controlling the speed of the attack, decay, and release, and the level of the sustain. The DX7 has an eight stage ADSR envelope, which allows you to set the level for ADSR and also the rate. I often program my DX7 envelopes for four stage programming, like my subtractive synths. It's faster to use and easier to follow when I don't require full eight stage ADSR control. I'll cover envelopes in a dedicated video later in the series. Reset your square patch by reselecting it. Press Edit, select your modulator, select EG level, and enter the following. Level 199, level 20, level 30, and level 40. Select your rates and enter the following. Rate 199, rate 20, rate 399, and rate 499. Now we can adjust the rate values like a subtractive synth envelope without having to program levels as well. Let's control the timbre by editing the modulator's envelope. Select the modulator, adjust rate 1 for the attack, and set its value to 20. A high value makes it quicker, and a low value makes it slower. Now change the decay. Set rate 2 to 18. We hear the modulator output level is decaying once the attack rate peaks. Again, a high value makes this quicker, and a low value makes it slower. Reset rate 2 to 0. To use this on the release stage, we need to edit the carrier release rate first. Right now, it's closing immediately, and therefore the modulator has no signal to modulate. If we slow the carrier's release, the modulator will have time to affect it, and also engage its own release stage. Set carrier rate 4 to 30, and set modulator rate 4 to 40. For an example of the modulator envelope in action, see my custom patch video MF Synth Brass, and for carrier envelope, see MF Orchestra. Practice the methods in this video to properly understand the roles of carriers and modulators. Please like and subscribe, stay tuned for the next episode, and check out my Patreon page for monthly SysX file patch downloads.